Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guy and this is another episode of the Asteroids game in C++ series and if you remember in the previous video we had a player the player could uh, like walk around actually not walk around since the player was a spaceship so it would kind of fly around and uh, and uh, we managed to get the direction of the player working and also everything else and uh, this means that it's pretty awesome however there is still a bit of a problem here which is that uh, well currently we have got all of this but we would like to make our player have the ability to shoot bullets now uh, to do that uh, we might want to you know spawn bullets dynamically in our scene and the number of bullets may increase or decrease uh, depending on like uh, how many times the player is shooting so we can't really hard code that as variables in the code because uh, all of this is like uh, it's a class we've got a class called player and we are creating a player called player but we can't create a bullet you know, because uh, the bullet may the there may be many bullets and all of them basically have the same update and draw logic but uh, uh, every bullet may have a different direction and stuff like that so it's not really possible to uh, have variables for that so we are gonna uh, have to change this to allow our a more flexible system so in order to do that uh, one thing by the way I'm going to do is that you can actually put this here directly transform or translate and here uh, inside of the player just wanted to show you that and the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a common class called entity now what this class is going to do is it's going to basically represent a single game object you can also call it game object if you want it's going to have a update function which takes a float delta time and a render function which takes a render window called window and both of these functions are going to be virtual which means they can be overridden and uh, we are gonna set these to be equal to zero which means these are pure virtual functions now uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the player class uh, inherit from entity and uh, we are going to make sure we mark both these function as override and what we want to make sure is that we actually rename this draw function to render since that's a bit more accurate so we are going to have it like that now we are not going to create a player uh, called player here directly of course we need to call render what we are going to do is we are going to include vector uh, here at the top uh, and we are going to create a std uh, vector of uh, entity pointers called entities and we are going to remove the player completely and in here we are not going to call player.update but instead we are going to go uh, for each entity inside of our entities uh, we are actually going to call, uh, make it a single loop so we can call update and draw uh, you know kind of like that so we are going to first of all entity update with the delta time and then we are going to render the entity with the window and of course we will need to clear the window before and then display afterwards and this is basically our main game loop now in order to have that player we are going to say entities dot pushback new player which will create a new player pointer now let's go ahead and run that and what you should see is that uh, yeah you can see that if I move around uh, you can see that it does seem to work quite well so yeah our player does still move around despite we are not creating a player directly but instead pushing it inside of our entities vector now when I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this entities vector global here and this is not like the best approach for games generally to make just a global entities vector but our game is very simple so we are going to uh, kind of embrace that simplicity and basically make this a global variable so that we can access it easily now in the update function we are going to check if the player wants to shoot we are going to for example if the player presses the space key then we are going to say that we want to shoot so yeah if that is the case then we are going to basically go ahead and create well we'll have to actually create a bullet class as well so we'll create a class called bullet which inherits uh, from entity and it's going to have uh, public uh, well it's going to have the update and the render functions and what we are going to do is we are going to make it so that uh, in the uh, well we are going to also have a bunch of private fields not really we are going to have a circle shape called shape and since a bullet is just going to be like a single point we are going to make it a circle and in the constructor we are going to say shape and we are going to just initialize it uh, using default uh, vari values here uh, like actually yeah uh, we are going to make initialize it with default value of uh, one uh, but uh, every value is going to be default the other value which is you know if I actually get the constructor you can see that uh, uh, if I open up circle shape here you can see that we have got we can put it a radius and also a point count we are going to leave that at default for the radius we are going to say zero uh, actually not zero one and then for the render function we are going to just draw this shape 
and we are going to also uh, have uh, you know in the constructor we are going to take in a vector to call direction and we are also going to have a private vector to call direction and we are going to initialize, uh, initialize that direction with that direction we have got and you can see that the player has got a position and an angle which is actually common to all entities so we are going to make it inside of entity instead of inside of player now that means that uh, we are going to basically have it everywhere and the problem with that is that you can see it does not allow us to initialize it easily because this is uh, not a uh, like direct member of player so in order to make the initialization easier we are going to create a constructor for entity which is going to take a position and an angle and initialize it like that and uh, yeah that that's pretty awesome and in here we are going to initialize entity with the vector to 500 500 and 0 for the angle so we can use it like uh, we can use it to initialize the base class now for the bullet we are going to take in a position and we are going to initialize the entity with the position and for the angle we are going to pass in 0 now that is all pretty cool but uh, the problem is that uh, currently of course our bullet does not move so we are going to say position plus equal direction multiplied by bullet speed now we are going to set bullet speed to be equal to 400 and when we are pressing the space key we are going to basically entities dot push back with a new bullet now for the constructor we are going to pass for the position we are just going to pass the player's position and we are going to for the direction we are going to pass an f sub vector 2f and in order to get the direction for the x value we will take the cos of the angle and for we will take the sine of the angle for the y of course we will need to get the angle in radians we are going to put this here and uh, uh, let me get this in a new line and we are going to say float radians is equal to angle multiplied by pi divided by 180 just like we did earlier and yeah that is going to be pretty cool so now let's go ahead and uh, the other, uh, and we have got a bit of a problem we need to fix which is that in render we are currently just rendering the shape without any uh, po positioning it correctly so we are for the transform we are going to pass in sf transform we are going to create it directly dot uh, translate actually and we are going to translate it according to our position so that works and we can also make it directly inside of our players render function so we are going to say sf transform dot translate uh, dot rotate and it's going to be a bit more direct and uh, kind of more easy to write i guess and we have got all of that done which means that uh, essentially uh, by the way you might note that uh, bullet does not require that we actually rotate it uh, the reason we are not applying that rotation is because uh, a circle does not change whether you rotate it or not so there's not really much point in that anyways you can see that all of that works the uh, one thing we need to do though is that uh, you can see we have got our uh, entity loop here but first before we actually test this we need to make sure we actually multiply this by the delta time as well or else our bullet will be a bit too fast so let's go ahead and put delta time here now if i actually run that you might be expecting that it's going to work but uh, uh let's see so if i go ahead and press space you can see that it suddenly gives an error and kind of exits the program which means our program crashes and that is due to some pointer stuff going wrong here so we need to actually fix that well if i change the range based for loop to a general for loop with like uh, indices then the problem with the copying of pointers uh, and stuff like uh, it's basically giving us wrong addresses for the pointer so if i do this it actually will work right correctly now so let's go ahead and run this and what you should see is that uh, we do get a mm, player here and if i press the space key it does shoot out a trail of bullets but there are basically too many bullets here that's because it's shooting one bullet every frame which is actually quite a lot of bullets it's a bit too much so basically there are two things right now that we need to fix first is that we need to destroy the bullets when they after a uh, while because uh, right now there are too many bullets and it would lead to a memory leak and the other thing is that we need to make sure that uh, uh, our bullets are we can only shoot our bullets like uh, for example five times in a second and not just constantly as long as we press the button so those two things are which we need to fix and we are going to fix those in the next video so stay tuned for that and make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss that one i'll see you in the next one make sure to uh, make sure to share this video with other people as well and bye